Hi, I'm Brett Newberry. Today we're going to continue with our series in regard to the changes related to the new tax bill. The new tax bill that was effective really for the most part or uh, effective in, in 2018, it's called the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And uh, today we're going to focus on some specific issues related to uh, business, uh, specifically in regard to C-corporations. C-corporations are uh, corporations that are paying tax at the corporate level instead of S corporations, which have they're a pass through, and that income is taxed at the individual level. So we're going to focus today on C corps. We have several C corps, and so uh, if if you fall into that category, uh, hopefully this will be some good information for you. One of the big changes in regard to the new tax bill is the new corporate tax rate, uh, effective for tax years that begin after December 31st, 2017. So if your calendar year, that would be for this year, for 18, it's gone to a flat 21%. Previously, it was graduated rates, which means as you made more money, the higher the marginal rate that you were having to pay. And so going to a flat 21% for C-Corps is a really significant change and really is going to be a good opportunity uh, for businesses to be able to retain more of their capital and use it for other purposes to hopefully expand their business. The other thing, if you're a personal service corporation, what that is is if you're a CPA, a lawyer, uh, where you're providing personal services and you're a C Corp, uh, what we would do a lot of times is we would drain the profits of these uh, personal service corporations because of the way the taxes worked on it. It was a flat 35% for personal service C Corps uh, under the old law but now that has been repealed and those uh, same C-Corps are now subject to the same flat 21%. So that's a, that's a major change in regard to personal service corporations. Again, this is all effective for tax years after December 31st, 2017. The alternative minimum tax, the AMT, has been a, a completely eliminated for corporate on the corporate side. So I, want, I don't want to get that confused with uh, unfortunately, they haven't eliminated the AMT on the individual side. They've made some modifications to it, but uh, it's still on the books. And so, but the AMT uh, in regard to corporations has been totally eliminated, which I think is good news. This is one that's really uh, a great planning opportunity for businesses related to bonus depreciation and Section 179 uh, write off. A uh, bonus uh, it's, we have clients that get confused about the order in regard to bonus versus section 179. Bonus is first, and then after you do the bonus, then you can look at section 179. Previously, the bonus depreciation, um, well, it, they've, they've had several changes to it, but uh, there was uh, one of the bonus issues we were dealing with previously is you could write off up to 50% uh, the first year, and then, but it had to be new equipment. And so now they've expanded that. It's now 100% that's available on new equipment or used equipment. So they've expanded it. So it's 100% and it could be either new or used. And so there's a great opportunity there. Uh, be careful in regard to bonus depreciation. It's actually mandatory, which means that if you don't want to take bonus depreciation and save some of that depreciation for future years, if you think you're going to have a significant increase in income, you have to elect out of bonus depreciation. Section 179 is uh, available after you deal with bonus, which is up to basically a million dollars. So you'd have a significant amount that uh, uh, you'd be investing in if that even really kicked in. Uh, so most likely you'd be dealing with bonus versus the section 179, but that's it, it's another thing that's available. You're not able to use section 179 to create a loss. On a, for a C corp, so be, be aware of that particular issue. In fact, it, I'm sorry, it also applies in regard to an S corp that you could not use uh, Section 179 to create a loss. Net operating losses, big change there. Uh, before, under the prior law, if you had a net operating loss, you could carry it back two years, get some taxes back, and then you would be able to carry it forward for 20 years and then use it over a period of time. Under the new tax bill, there's been a significant change in the regard to the use of net operating losses. Under the new uh, tax act, net operating losses, no more carry back. You can only basically carry it forward. 
And so one thing you need to be aware of is there is some limitations on how much you can use in future years. And so you, you won't be able to use maybe the full amount. There's a, a limitation in regard to taxable income of how much you could use on a net operating loss carry forward. So there's a planning opportunity there, but you need to be aware of this change because it's a, a significant change versus the previous, under the uh, oh, previous law. We're going to, uh, on our next video, we'll uh, continue with some of these uh, business changes under the new tax bill. But I hope this has been some good information for you. And uh, if you have any questions or would like, if you need to get together, maybe take do some projections in regard to these what ifs uh, so that you're better prepared to deal with it. We're more than happy to help you out. You just need to call our office and make an appointment. Hope you found this informative. Thank you.